where to go. So we're up here on the panhandle. Two hours will be in Oklahoma, and maybe we'll find some old metal between here and there. We found an old car at a repair shop, and it, obviously the owners are probably enthusiasts because they have a hot couple of pickups here. So we're gonna find out about that 59 Chevy. And does it have a motor now? Yeah, it's got a 348. A 348? No yeah. kidding. What a sweet body stuff. It has been here at least 15 years that I know of. Holy mackerel. We're in Dodge City. Uh, woke up to a cold morning. So two days ago it was 92. Yesterday was in the mid 60s. Right now it's 47 and threatening for rain. So uh, it's eight o'clock. We're gonna give it another hour or so before we start knocking on people's doors. And they might show us in their backyard. We saw one last night, an old Chevy panel van. So we're gonna give that a shot. Uh, there's somebody outside. Okay, timing is right. He's got a cowboy hat and everything. Hi, George. Ah! Sorry, are you a hot rodder? <laughs> or it used, to, it used to be? <laughs> well, I had everything from a 650 Triumph to a I bought this this panel wagon from my wife. You bought it from her or for Yeah, her? it was her grandfather's. He used oh, it no in kidding. California for a uh, dairy company, an uh, ice cream truck kind of like deal. But anyway, I bought it from her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then... And then you wanted to get married? Kept it, then when you got married, <laughs> and then I drove it from Tucson, Arizona, where I met her, up to here. And then... Uh, well, we went on our honeymoon in it. Oh, really? So, this was stock when you got it? Yeah, pretty much so. It had a six-cylinder in it, and then, like I said, on our honeymoon, we blew out the engine. <laughs> so what year was it? What year did you buy this car? It's so a 1950. 50. Well, what year did you buy it? So it had been about 72. So I'm looking at, it's got a gas cap. Did you put this gas cap in there? Yeah, I had it, I had it redone. They put uh, different tail lights. Yeah, I mean, those things are channeled. And, yeah. uh, huh. Now, it's got the, the French antenna. Yeah, I mean, I, they did that. Yep. In California? No, this was done in, in Dodge here. So this is a GMC. It's not a Chevy. Yeah, it's a GMC. And it's, it's got the stainless grill. That's pretty rare. So how long do you figure it's been sitting here? The, it's been sitting here over, oh, I'd say, 30 years. 30 years. Wow. <laughs> This is 19, right? Yeah, it's been, here. It's, it's been longer than that. Man, no kidding. So, all right, what, what, what motor you got in here? Is this open? Yeah, it should. It's a 327. Oh, yeah, uh, no, like I said, it hadn't been cracked open for a while. I wonder what's living in there. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, well. It's, so, uh, so it's got a 327. It's got a 327. We put a Camaro steering wheel in there because I lost the keys. Now I've lost the keys to this. So you've got kind of French door handles here? Yeah, he put Somebody those really in. went to town on this thing. Well, that's pretty cool. And the interior was done as well? Oh, look at, oh the well, old shed I, carpet. I put, yeah, he put, <laughs> I had a friend of mine do the whole deal in carpet. Uh-huh. I don't know, that, that's very rusty shut too. You think you're gonna do something with it? Or it's just a sculpture? Oh, like I said, uh, I don't know. It is, if a uh, ship ever came in, I guess I'd redo it, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Well, that's a, that's a neat one, man. Well, Jim's got to go off to work, and uh, we're going to go off to find some other vehicles while we're in Dodge City. So wish us luck. Come along for the ride. Driving down the road here in Dodge City, looking for cars and we just saw a front end sticking out behind a building so I'm going back to investigate that right now. Driving down the road. First, we saw a Mustang under a cover. Now we see something else under cover. Eventually, we've got to get out of the car and into the rain. So, here we go.
I knock on the door, and Carlos answered, and he said, sure, let's take a look at it. It's my wife's car. So let's go see what he's got under this cover. Luggage rack. Did you, did you fix it up? Yes, I fixed it myself. No kidding. It looks like a new top. So that's probably what, a uh, 79? Uh, 70, yes, 79. 79, okay, it's a rubber bumper MG. Oh, that thing is primo. So, what's your wife's name? Alma. Alma, and how long has Alma owned this? Uh, five years ago. Really? Yeah. And so did you repaint it and everything? Yeah, I repainted. You painted right here in the garage? No, actually I... Oh, uh, you had it done? Yeah. Well, that's a nice car. Nice interior. It's got overdrive. Mm-hmm. So see there's a little switch on top of the shift knob. So you have first, second, third, fourth, and then you switch it, it's got electric overdrive. Man, that's a nice car. How many miles are there? 60,000 miles. 60. Yeah. Oh, you did a nice job. Do you have any other old cars? No, just this one. Yeah, well, that's a good one. That's cool. So, did you do the mechanical work yourself? Yes, I do mechanical myself. All right, well, listen, I appreciate you uh, showing that to us. That's cool. Things have changed here in uh, Dodge City pretty quickly. So the sky got dark, it starts raining these big raindrops, and there's lightning flashing. I guess welcome to Kansas, right? So uh, there could be hail, there could be tornado, I'm not sure. So we're heading back to the hotel to see if we can park this car under the overhang in case uh, this hail, we don't get any damage on it. Well, just look at the weather forecast. And it looks like this band of bad weather is going southwest, northeast. So we're gonna to try to go due north and break out of this weather system and start hunting for cars again. <clears throat> but it's, uh, it's 1020 in the morning right now and we're getting the heck out of Dodge. I've wanted to use I've been wanting to use that term my whole life. <laughs> there for a little while but it's still raining so we decided to just keep on trucking towards McPherson College in McPherson Kansas uh, you're probably wondering why we're talking about McPherson so much on this trip students have come down and helped us on the car over there winter break get this car ready what we've decided to do is after we found this car we decided well we don't need another car ourselves Haggerty Tom Carter we should donate it to a good cause and McPherson has a good cause. That college is the only college in America that offers a bachelor's degree in automotive restoration. Students come out of there trained as amazing restorers. Four-year program, metalworking, engine building, painting, upholstery work. And so uh, we're going to donate this to the school as a parts chaser, a parts getter. A, we went to the auto parts store or the junkyard to get, pick up supplies. We figured this would be a neat car for them to do that. Plus they can finish things like you know the interior door panels, whatever they want to do to it. So we're heading there now. We're going to put the car in a garage and tomorrow we're going to clean it all up because we're going to present it the next night. Tomorrow night we're going to present it to the school. A lot of the students I think are going to be surprised. It should be, it should be a really nice event. So we made it to McPherson, about 924 miles from Midland, Texas. And we're going to a shop right now of a, a neat young guy named Dalton Woodfield who graduated from McPherson and opened up a shop in town here to do restorations and general old car repair, allowing us to park this indoors. To Walking through the sheds at adjacent to McPherson College, and this is where students work on their own projects. 
and I, I come up to Mason Duffy's car here and uh, said, well, if that's a Datsun, but what? And he said, it's a, it's a second generation 510. I said, boing, I'm a 510 guy. Tell me about this. So thank you uh -huh. for allowing us sharing your car. So tell us about this. Um, so it's a 78 510, um, completely going a full custom build on it, trying to do a um, period correct to how they would have done it in the 70s. So the term that they actually go by is the Bozuzoku cars of Japan. Bozu what? Bozuzoku. Oh. And um, so it's got, you know, the huge exhaust pipes, which you can see right there. And those will be welded onto the exhaust and they'll be sticking so way up So these are going to stick up in the air? Yeah, yeah. Here, grab one. We'll, uh... <laughs> so they uh, stick on there like that. And then... Just... Do you have mufflers or just straight pipes? It's uh, straight pipes. And uh, it's got a, a uh, like the Dukes of Hazard horn on there too to just speak even more loud and obnoxious with Jeez. it. Um, but yeah, right now I'm working on the uh, spoiler for it and the bodywork and just trying to get it to uh, get it ready for paint next year, hopefully. So, so you're looking at pictures and videos of cars in Japan that are like this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, go. I've ordered like several magazines from Japan that kind of have this style of car, and it's. Definitely hard trying to do this in the U.S. because no one's really done this before. And um, there's some people in the U.S. that have done it, and I'm trying to go as crazy as I can. And uh, within the past couple of years, there's been a few people that have gotten more into this. But So what are these? Um, so those are the fender flares that are going to go on it, and they'll just be bolted right on the side. And I'm hoping to do um, really wide, small diameter tires, so I'm hoping to do 14 by 10 in the rear. Cool. So that would be the... That, that would be the uh, passenger side. So let's see here. You can see I had them taped on here not too long ago just to mock them up. But so they'll sit right on there, right about like that-ish. Yep. And I'm hoping to have wheels that are just going to be flush with the edge of the fender <laughs> flare with it. Jeez. And what color will you paint this? Um, so the original color of this is orange, and that's also my favorite color. So I am going to keep it orange but I'm gonna do a two-tone, so it's gonna be a silver metal flake underneath, and then it'll have candy orange on top of it. And will the engine remain stock? Uh, no, so right now I have a different head on it and to give it a little bit higher compression, I put a different cam in there. Um, I've got an Offenhauser intake headers, you know, some just little things to help pep it up a little, and then I'm hoping to swap in the manual transmission in it here soon. So how long have you had this? It was actually my first car. I bought it when I was 16, and. Uh, Daily drove it for a few months, and then I uh, blew the head gasket in it actually, and I had never touched a car motor before in my life, and so learned how to uh, work on it on the fly, and just been learning ever since, using it as a great tool for me to learn on it. So. And so you work on this on your own, but when you go over to the Templeton Hall, you're working on Model Ts and things. Yeah, uh, it's definitely kind of interesting because I love the '70s cars and. It's not necessarily what the program focuses on, but it's a, you can take what you learn there and apply it to anything. And I think that's really great. And um, I think that's why the sheds is really important because you can take what you learn over there and you can figure out, well, how can I apply this technique to my car over there and to figure out what you need to do to it. I love it, man. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. This, this is a blast. I have a good one. Lotus Europa. Holy crap. Hello. Look at this. Studebaker Lark pickup truck. So, nobody at this school has seen the 62 Ford wagon that we've just driven up from Texas. But somebody said, you know, there's a cool red Falcon wagon here that you want to see. And so we're walking over to it, and I looked at it a moment ago. I said, oh, my God, this thing looks like a smaller version of, of the country sedan we just drove. So this is Nathan Poor, and Nathan owns this car. And so I said, man, we've got to take a look at this thing. It's, it's, it was quite a treat when I figured it was still in the family. And uh, my little brother and I actually pulled it out of a field about two years ago. So tell, wait, this was in your family? My great-great-grandfather bought this brand new in 1961. Is that right? And so my grandma is on my tail making sure it stays back to original and, 
and you know we don't do anything weird or funky to it and uh just kind of enjoy it and cruise it so this was sitting in a field yes this was uh this was sitting in a field in um northwestern kansas and uh you know when when my grandpa decided to give it up and be done with it that's kind of where it ended up and it sat there and since, behind his uh, house no it was just a just a lot that uh one of his friends owned you know kind of sat and sunk into the ground we had to get new wheels and tires for it because they were shot um one of the hardest things to find is 61 came factory optioned uh with the electric rear window so there's no rear uh or there's no crank on the back and so i've been kind of banging my head against the wall trying to figure out what to do to fix that and um i actually found the rear window mechanism um hmm. at a junkyard just north of here is that right yeah so is this original paint on here, you think? This is the original paint. Um, someone kind of messed with the interior along the way. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not <laughs> not correct, obviously. So but it's got a three-speed on the column. Three-speed on the column. It's the 170 special. Uh, they originally optioned the 144, but in 61, you were allowed this, to get the 170. This is a big block. Yeah, this, this was the, a lot of, you know, it had a lot of trim on it. And I have a lot of the trim left. I'm just yep. missing a couple pieces up so there. So this decal, is that... Like that's that was a, on the air cleaner, or is that the... Pump? That's the original decal, but yes, they do have it on the air cleaner as well. Isn't that something? Yeah. So, ha like, so having sit in the field that long, how the floors and rocker panels? Um, to be honest, there's a little... Right underneath the driver, there's a little hole. Um, and, you know, we, we did a, a partial or a temporary fix for that until I have the money to, you know, go back through and put a new floor section in. But wow. other than that, there's not really a whole lot of rust on it. Um, Interior is kind of in rough shape. It originally had a dash pad, and I pulled it off, and the metal dash just looks looks brand new under it. So. You know, this must be a, a, a more deluxe version than the one we have because we have a metal dash, and we have a crank up rear window. So this is optioned out higher than yeah. what we have. We have an automatic and a V8. That's a little a little nicer than. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, that's that's super. So how does this run? Uh, it runs really well, but to be honest, it's a little obnoxious right now because we took it to Cars and Coffee a couple weeks ago and the manifold actually split into two Ooh, pieces. Ooh, that's broken big time. So How'd that happen? Um, we were pulling it onto the trailer and the exhaust under the whole thing uh, was hanging a little too low. And oh, we ended up barely just kind of hitting it. It was already cracked before we hit it. So, I mean, it, it starts and runs real nice. Could, could you start it for us? Yeah, of course. Softly, yeah. you know, it, it runs real good. Um, so have you found a manifold for you? Yeah, the same place I found the rear window uh, mechanism. So my dad and my uncle actually tried to get it going around ni 1992 and, uh, you know, didn't really have any luck, so they just kind of let it go again. <laughs> and uh, the funny thing is, is that my brother was the one that wanted to pull it out of the field and, you know, I didn't have the time or the money and so he went ahead and pulled it out of the field and kind of gave up on it. And then, so I, I think I was kind of destined to have this car because there's been multiple times where we've tried to get rid of it and it keeps coming back. But, but yeah, it's, it's a cool little car and I, yep. I don't ever plan on getting rid of it or doing anything That's weird great. to it. So. Wow. Man, thanks. Yeah, thank hope you for coming to interview me. I hope we didn't take you out of class today. No, 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 I don't have class right now. Who's the bug eye guy? Are you? you are, how you doing? Tom Cotter. We're walking around the sheds and somebody came up to us and said, you got to meet Sean Robinson. He's got a bug-eyed Sprite, which I love, uh, and uh, he's got an interesting story. So, Sean, thank you Thanks for, for bringing us out here. So what's, what's special about this car? So what's special about this is I bought it off a guy who purchased it in 1964. He had it sandblasted and filled with lead and primed, and it sat ever since then. And he recently got into a motorcycle accident and had to start kind of selling some of the, his projects that he can't work on anymore. So I bought this to restore for my mom uh, and to finish the previous owner's build, which he was going for a Sebring style conversion, hence the wire wheels, the front disc brakes, right hand drive, and the roll bar. And my mom, I sent her a picture of it and she absolutely fell in love for it. So I'm doing the whole build just for her. Isn't that nice? So it's gonna be a street car? Yes. 
Streetcar. We're okay. So this this is Healy Blue. It was originally that color. It was originally, uh, I believe, Old English White. But we're kind of debating on colors right now. She loves the, she loves the dark blue color. I'm more of a British racing green kind of guy. So, I would bet this car was blue. I mean, who does a, who does a paint job all the way back there? That's, yeah. that's amazing. If that's a repaint, that's an amazing repaint. Mm -hmm. So, was this low mileage? Uh, the mileage is unknown. The title said it was about forty-nine thousand miles, and it being fifty-nine uh, to sixty-four, they put sixty thousand miles on it in about five years. Huh. Wow. So is this a Chicago, Chicago car? I bought this uh, from Minneapolis, Kansas, about an hour north of here. Oh, okay. It's got, it looks like it's got an amazing body. The floor's good, yeah. the rocker panel's good. And this has got a 948? Uh, it has a uh, 1098 going in it, or a 1275, not sure yet. Go for the 1275, you'll never regret it. So it was already modified with disc brakes and wire wheels? Yes, the previous owner did that for me. So what, what's, what's next? What are, you, what are you doing to right now? Doing the body work, uh, getting all the paint stripped off, making, getting it ready for paint so I can start doing the upholstery and just putting pieces together. We're working on the engine right now on the side as well. And so you're going you're gonna to do everything right here. What, what, what year are you as a Freshman. So you want to get it done by the time you're a senior? Yeah. Isn't that cool? Man. It was a complete car when you got it? I have several crates of parts. Okay, got so it. So I should have a complete car what in there somewhere. What year is it? 59. 59. So it was driven for five years. Yeah. Man, like a time capsule. Yeah. Very cool. And your mom wants it, what, dark blue? Yeah. Yeah, neat. All right, well, thanks. We've got more sheds to visit. Thank you. Very cool, thanks. Thanks. So this is Jake Pullen, and Jake has invited us to tour a Cortina project that he's working on. So we have been actually toured around campus today, partly by Jake Pullen. And Jake said, why don't you want to come to my shed and see what I'm working on? And uh, so he's working on a, on a Ford Cortina. So tell us what we're looking at here. So this is a 1968 Ford Cortina Mark II. I picked it up in Redding, California from a, a widower. And he had the car since new, parked it in a barn for a number of years, and then finally decided to pull it out, sell it, and uh, we picked it up, and th we had plans for it to part it out, but the oh. car was so, the car just had no rust eating away. It's all surface, so we decided this could be a future project for something. And then I, as soon as I came out here, my father pitched the idea of doing a Lotus Cortina tribute w with the 1.8 Miata motor that I have in the back. And just well, show us that now. Standard Cortina had a push rod 1600 motor? Yes, 1600cc Kent block. And then there was a modified Cortina, a Lotus Cortina. Mostly were, they had like a green stripe on a white body. And so you're going to replicate that? Yes, yes. This, is, this engine came, around, came when uh, Ford was owning Mazda. And so it's a lot like the Lotus Cortina block. And the dual overhead cam setup is also reminiscent of that. So you're a sophomore? I'm a junior. You're a junior, okay. So you're going to put this motor in here and it's going to look like a Lotus Cortina, but it's going to be- It's going to be- More affordable, easy to get parts for. I mean, Miatas just don't break. And more power. Jake, thank you. We thank have you. other sheds to go explore, but what a blast. I love this car. So I'll let the owners explain what they have, what they've built, and what they hope it to be. So Abigail, what's your last name? Abigail Morgan. And? Lane Sutterby. Okay, well you guys take it away. So I grew up around Crosley's. My family, we have a bunch of them, about eight, and they've been a passion of mine. And so my freshman year, I came to college and I met boy, my boyfriend, Lane. And um, I, you know, really wanted to do a big shed built and so around sophomore year, my parents helped us buy this Crosley body for $1,000. So very economical for us college students. So we were really excited. And then he loves big block dualies. So that's kind of how we came up with this. Um, it's a conglomerate of our two main interests. So it's kind of really special that we're building it together. So yeah, the body is a 49 Crosley station wagon. Um, the chassis is a 89 Dodge one ton, 
and I cut it in half, shortened it three foot, did a triangulated four link under the back, uh, airbags on all four corners. And after that, the engine is 72 to 74 model, not quite sure, Cadillac 472. Rebuilt it in our advanced engines class out here at the college. Um, Trans is a super turbine 400 out of a 67 Buick Wildcat. So the design we wanted to go with is kind of a post-apocalyptic, badass rat rod. So we did a lot of, um, you know, subtle details to make it look like that. Put a, you know, heavy rake on it, galvanized metal. Uh, makes it look kind of put together, really, you know, rat rod-ish. Um, but also has amenities like brand new auto meter gauges. Um, and you know, nice comfy seats for us. Steering linkage is just three quarter inch bar stock. And one of the little details is the uh, brackets. I've got them tacked welded out of roller chain and I can, got it set up so I can unbolt it, swing that loose and replace that bearing. Um, throttle chains, roller chain, dipstick handle is an old wrench. Uh, I have yet to make brackets for my visor, but they're also going to be old wrenches and I want to set it up so I can adjust it on the fly. Um, and then inside we've got a lot of details. The steering wheel is also roller chain and then my dad and I wrapped it with the leather around your grip points. On the door, um, you can kind of see it says Made Right Drive-In, so my mom um, and dad got this from a gentleman in Illinois who had a few and this sat outside of a drive-in kind of as a promotional car so that is how it got its great patina um, it it probably sat out there for 20, years, years yeah at least. Um, and so I'm glad we could rescue it I think it's you know it's a good car to start with mm -hmm. you, know, um, you guys need your own show I, I'm, I'm, I'm retired <laughs> oh goodness <laughs> This is the uh, kind of the moment we've been waiting for, thinking about for more than a year, donating this car to McPherson College. We're driving over there right now to a hot dog cookout. We're gonna drive this in and give the keys to the president of the college. And we'll wash our hands. Literally and figuratively. So th we're, we're having an escort. The 62 Ford is having a, a, an escort, a Model T Speedster in front of us and a Model T sedan two cars behind us. Uh, they're, they're, one's a senior and one's a recent graduate of school. This is what they drive around town with the Model T Fords. It's, it's a crazy experience. Kids should be in class now. What's going on? Welcome to McPherson. <laughs> great to have you, you here. Think, man? Good to see you look great. Well, officially pass the keys over. We're we gonna call it Big Red, do you think? Uh, yeah, I mean, okay. yeah, we, yeah, I like that, Big Red. Big Red, okay. The McWagon, well, McWagon. for short. <laughs> We're gonna officially pass the keys to uh, Mike Schneider. Michael is the president of McPherson College and uh, he's been watching this from a distance happen. And here you go, pallets. Thank you so much. No warranty. This is uh, this is great. Only in McPherson, Kansas, will you find something like this, where uh, people who love cars and uh, love to keep it real. I, I mean, this is. I mean, I, I'm speechless. Yeah. Tell me about the top. The story behind the top. Again. Well, it was rusty. I mean, it was rusty, and the rust was, you know, probably a sixteenth of an inch up. Yeah. They said, well, we can't clear over that. It's too rough. Let's just sand it down. I think and this might be my favorite part. That they is sand, so cool. They sanded the top. It was it was Austin and um, Dalton. Dalton. Yeah. And they sanded it down. They said, we don't want to paint it white. Why don't we just keep it the way it is? So they mixed up a clear. Uh -huh. Plus they put in some uh, is it baking soda? I think. Corn cornstarch. Cornstarch. And it gave it kind of a a, a mottled look. I got it. Yeah, I see it now. <laughs> yeah. That is so awesome. <laughs> so this has got new disc disc brakes in the front. We put yeah. on. New brakes in the back, new ball joints, tie rod ends, uh, shocks, axle bearings, wheel bearings. I mean, this this is functionally a new car. I love it. An old it. body. I love it. <laughs> yeah, You're gonna yeah, love yeah. it. Thank you so much.
All right, well, I'm gonna get a hot dog. Yes. Welcome to Matt Carson. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, happy hunting. There won't be any weird tires left. <laughs> <laughs>